this morning on cool outdoor stuff. We're in the upper reaches of the Chesapeake Bay and I want to show you a little bit about plankton. Uh, there's all kinds of plankton. Uh, plankton simply means free floating and we have plants that are free floating. We call them phytoplankton. We have zooplankton that are free floating. We call them zooplankton. And here in the upper bay at this time of year, it's the end of March, the water temperatures just about 50 degrees and the bay, is, the water is loaded with zoo and phytoplankton. This is a plankton net. It's simply a, a wide mouth rim here. There's a very fine mesh material. Water can pass through it. Macroorganisms will get caught and funnel down to uh, this cone or stomach that I'm gonna put down in the very bottom. And then we're some, simply going to drag it through the water, filtering the water column. So here I am putting it in, and we'll take a look at it in just a little bit. What we're looking at are a combination of myrio and holio plankton. These are plankton that some of which, these tiny crustaceans, stay planktonic their entire lives. They'll never get any larger. And then there are others in here that could be newly born fish, tiny fish eggs, uh, white perch and yellow perch and striped bass all mixed in there together and they're planktonic now. They're just freely floating in the water and they go over the, wherever the current takes them, but eventually they'll graduate from that and they'll become nekton, they'll become free swimmers. These little crustaceans are called copepods and um, they are very uh, tiny shrimp-like animals that eat algae. They have a, a crustaceous shell over their whole body, legs, antennas, they have meat that is their muscle they have hearts they take dissolved oxygen out of the water they are complex organisms imagine they're they're about the size of the point of a pencil and what they're eating is salad they're eating a salad of algae that is blanketing the water in the bay so on any given day in the spring, when the water temperature hovers around 50, one can come to the upper reaches of the Chesapeake and filter zooplankton out of the water. If you consider the numbers, it's boggling. If I could look through just a small section of this cylinder of zooplankton, and you can see how populated it is compared to this one, I can't, I can't make the estimate on how many living organisms must be in this container. Is it a half a million, 200,000? And then if I consider the implications, how many are out here in the vast waters of the bay feeding on algae in a body of water that we consider to be troubled, where society is struggling to save the bay, the numbers are still staggering. It's pretty cool outdoor stuff.